How's everybody doing? Pete here at Spawn Fly Fish and today we're going to tie up a fun little nymph called the Peach Pie. And why we're tying this fly is because I, I fish with Josh a lot in these rivers out here in Iwako and the um, coastal rivers. And we fish for the Sea Run Cutthroat and this guy absolutely puts on a clinic every time we're out. And he's fishing a lot of streamers, um, little articulated streamers, different stuff. And he of course has great success. And what I'd like to do is see if these trout would behave like normal trout, like from Arizona maybe. So we toss a, a dry dropper rig at them or an indicator with a, a heavy nymph underneath. Either way, we're gonna start pursuing that a little bit more, at least I am, and see what kind of success we can have. So today, peach pie, let's get at it. All right, so in the vise for this little peach pie, the hook we're using today is the Core 1120, and this is a size six. For the bead, I've got a peach spawn football bead, and this is size 5.5 millimeter. And what we're gonna do first is just put some non-lead weighted wire behind that bead so that we get to hold that thing in position. Eight to 10 wraps should get it done no matter what you're doing here. If you need to go heavier, of course, you can always adjust that bead size. And after we cut these, round over the cut edges. And then we cut the back. And round it over. And chances are this bead might not be, since it's a non-upturned um, hook here, it's not a jig style hook. I don't think this bead's going to turn this fly over a bunch, but it, it should be a, a little bit of a wave motion at least. So on for the thread here, got some uni 6 aught and the color here is camel. Just going to trim out this tag end of that beautiful thread. And now we'll start wrapping in 45 degree angle upward and the same 45 degree ba back. And we'll do that a couple times over the weighted wire. And once we have those positioning wraps, we'll go ahead and, and wrap down in between each wrap, pulling all those threads in there nice and snug. So now let's get toward the back where this hook bend is. And I've, I've tied many variations of this fly when I was in Arizona. And as far as a general attractor, it's a great fly. Uh, brown trout, rainbow trout, they all just love this guy. All right, so for a tail, we want a little bit more movement than just a stagnated nymph. So we've got some um, peach marabou here. This is Spawn's fluorescent southern peach, and this is produced by Hairline. So I'm gonna get about an inch worth of fibers and just strip them down that quill and what we're looking for is something maybe body length or just even a little bit longer so about like so once you've got that pinched switch the pinch to your off hand place it on top of the hook where you want to tie it down now I'm going to get a couple of angled wraps here going and I'm going to then start working it back toward where we previously put that thread is our little indicator of the the tie-off spot for that tail. And as you see there, nice fluffy, not exactly all the same length, which I am a fan of that. So I'm gonna cut these so that they end right behind that weighted wire. And the reason being, I do want a smooth transition from all these underbody materials all the way up to behind the bead. So now, get that securely tied in and you can see that the taper is still there. We don't have any, any craziness going on yet. All right, so first thing we're gonna add for our body, we're gonna tie in three elements here and then we'll just kind of wrap everything in sequence after that. So I've got a small piece, maybe six inches of some gold uni and this is size small, and I'm just gonna tie this 
pretty much on top of the shank, maybe slightly off to one side, that won't hurt anything. And then come all the way back up. Now I'm gonna come back down again. And our second element that we will tie in is a single hurl of peacock. And when I tie this in, peacock is just like any other feather in, in that it has a kerf. So there's a, a curve on the inside or convex side or concave side rather and then you have a convex side or top and you'll see why we pay attention to that here in a little bit and I'll just tag that I'll tag end out of there and there's one tail fiber that keeps popping up and there we have it and so now for our our final abdomen or body tie-in material here I've got some uni floss and this is a one ply and the color is pumpkin but I figure since the oranges kind of match some of the peach tones this will work just fine for our fly give us a little contrast in that body too which is always good all right so once you've got that tied all the way back in tidy up the underbody here a little as we wrap all the way back up once again to behind the bead. So at this point I'm going to start with that floss that we just tied in previous and I'm going to just start wrapping this body and as you'll see here when you make a wrap of this floss if you let it kind of flatten out as you wrap you'll get some pretty good coverage and I'm wrapping almost like overlapping wraps here so as it, as it spreads and flattens, roughly one half of each wrap should cover one half of the previous wrap. I'm just gonna take your time and work all the way up to behind that bead. And I'm not sure what it is about the colors involved with this fly uh, but it surely does get eaten quite a bit and it's one of my confidence go-to searching nymphs if I'm hitting new water or just trying to find out where the fish are in water you do know I mean it's, it's just buggy and the tails move in for whatever reason the colors look great I'm hoping that with the sea run cutthroat they kind of have some familiarity with a, a sh you know the shrimp and everything else that they're eating in the salt water so now we've got this wrapped up, I'm gonna pull it back over itself, get a couple thread wraps on top, and now I can safely remove that floss. All right, so now we're on to this peacock, and I'm going to carefully look, and once you see, we are going to, so this one's gonna to want to wrap, hmm, looks to be counterclockwise, and that's perfect for what we're trying to do. So as I'm wrapping toward myself here, I want those fibers releasing off toward the back. And it might be something new for you, but go ahead and, and start paying attention to the way those fibers come off. And what happens is as this moves through the water, these start to breathe uh, like the filaments on a mayfly almost and they'll, they'll wiggle back and that's very natural. That's what fish will recognize as normal and they don't hesitate to go ahead and slam that bug and tie that in, tie it off and let's trim out the tag end of our peacock there. So you see this is very similar to how you would tie a Bloody Mary. And so now we're going to wrap counter to the way we wrapped in our peacock. And so what I'm doing here is just gently shimmying this wire as I wrap. And what, what I'm hoping to do here is avoid trapping down a lot of the filaments from that peacock curl because we do want those breathing and moving. So try not to trap down a bunch of those fibers if you can. And again, shaking or shimmying that wire as you wrap will, will definitely make a big difference. Trim that out. Just use your thumbnail, make sure that's flat. And if it is, continue wrapping down that tag end. 
So we are very close to done here. What I've got now is a whiting saddle feather in brown. And I'll show you the bottom here at the base. I've trimmed off a bunch of fibers. What I'm gonna do is actually position like so, and I'm going to tie that in over the hook eye. And as far as position, I do want the con cave facing upward. So that means the convex or darker top is against the hook shank. And the reason being, when we pull this up and start to wrap, then it will allow the fibers to face the rear of the fly. So for our final tie-in element here, I'm going to get three peacock curls off of a stick here. This is just a peacock eyed stick. And once I've got all three, I'm gonna go up toward the tips of these uh, curls and then maybe an inch and an inch and a half back from the tips, I'm going to place them right behind that bead. And that will be my tie-in. The reason being, the tips on these hurls are pretty fragile. So if you tie on the very tips of it, you're, you're just going to ask for frustration and, and break that quite a bit. So before that last wrap, let me remove these tag ends of, of peacock hurl. And so now we are right behind the bead and ready to take all three hurls gently from the, the bottoms of these, start twisting these three hurls together. So this will give us fuller coverage and better uniformity as we start wrapping now all three hurls at once. Look at the no gaps, dense, full coverage of peacock for the abdomen, or excuse me, for that thorax. And then on that final one, We'll just snug that in there and tie off all of our peacock curl. So three wraps there. I'm going to sneak this in front of the wraps, or excuse me, the hurls. Two wraps, trim out the butt ends. And now one more wrap of thread to get in front of our feather. And then I can simply start coming back. And I'm going to take one full wrap. And maybe one more, like so. I'm gonna brush those fibers just gently with my fingers and come up. Once I'm up here, I'm going to slick that thread right into the V, like so. And that's gonna hold my feather in place. A Couple more thread wraps just to make sure it's solidified in there. And then we'll pull that feather back. And like we always do, get that thread in front of all those fibers. And now we can safely remove our feather. There's one fiber. Pretty good. All right. So at this point, bring all those fibers back. Nice clean thread neck, if you will, in there. And we are ready to whip finish. There's one. Let's do another one for good measure here because we do you expect this to get eaten? Uh, we are ready for some head cement. As you can see, nothing crazy to this fly, but it does have a little bit of extra movement that for a nymph, most are missing. It's got the, the peacock is going to breathe in here. It's gonna be flashing iridescence at those fish as it goes by. If you're gonna dress for success, this is the way to do it. And be sure to try your best not to get a bunch of cement into those hackle fibers. All right, and there we have it. Some peach pie. You don't need a holiday to celebrate and eat peach pie. It's good for you all year long, so go ahead and dig in. And I hope you guys tie up this fly. I hope you go fish it. I know you'll catch fish if you do. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like and subscribe, and we will see you all on the water.